Um, all right, so what I, what I want to take some time to talk to you about is uh, actually a supplement that we had had with, um, with uh, Mike Cherry in the Saccharomyces genome database. And the idea was to expose, basically to promote, it was an interoperability supplement uh, for intermine and for the uh, uh, yeast mine in particular. So Maxime Deraspe, he's the one who's mostly been doing the work. Uh, he comes from Quebec. Uh, we're doing this work with Mike Cherry and Kalpana and Gail. Uh, and we've been interacting with Goss, who has also been here. So actually, what we're doing here, in fact, is nothing new. Uh, this idea of exposing linked data for model organisms has, has been developed here at the Biohackathon. And, uh, uh, and so many of the ideas that were first developed, we sort of decided that we would try to take it one step further and also work with the Intermine team to see that we can get this translated um, and, be, and be made part of the distribution. So Intermine is a platform for model organism data. Uh, there's currently about 25 different instances of Intermine, uh, spanning all kinds of organisms. The access is primarily through uh, a database query API, although there is a web interface and tools to, do, uh, to help you create queries. Um, primarily, there's a core data object model, and then there are some uh, which consists of a, a few tables, and then there are some uh, very mind-specific customizations that can be made. And these, these, um, these particular customizations is really where the, the model starts to fall apart. While the minds can capture certain kinds of data that they might have been curating, there's really no consistency across the minds. So you really lose any kind of potential for interoperability. So this heterogeneity and those tables and fields and the terminologies that they use definitely pose challenges for interoperability and also for queries that might span across multiple species. So again, being kind of a semantic web enthusiast, we sort of said, ah, semantic web to the challenge, right? What can we do for the minds to try to improve interoperability of them? Um, and as we've been hearing, you know, um, semantic web technologies are increasingly being adopted at large um, bioinformatics institutions. And uh, we can only really see this trend continue to grow, whether it's in its uh, original formulation or, again, what we're seeing through other related efforts like, for instance, schema.org, people are starting to think about how to structure their information. Now, mods, like many other uh, omics databases, do rely on other people's content. So this is really where links between the content we, we might create and to links from which we have derived them is really important. And so linked data offers this ability to dereference de and obtain information about links from authoritative sources. So there's an opportunity to improve mod interoperability by mapping um, their ontologies and vocabularies together and trying to create a more semantically interoperable environment. So what we proposed was to develop a model organism linked uh, database. Uh, so we call it MOLD, uh, based on the yeast uh, uh, mine that we've been working on. And really it's, again, in the line of <clears throat> trying to expose resources as being more fair, that is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. We had three specific aims. The first is to improve the interoperability by publishing linked data, um, to demonstrate how we could query between mod databases and other kinds of uh, linked open data, and to package our software so it becomes vastly easier for people to deploy their own instances of an intermine and the linked data platforms that go with it. So our database contains uh, six of the mods currently. Um, it's linked to 38 of the BioTRDF data sets. We have a script that's pretty easy to run uh, and can generate uh, these linked data mines for any of any intermine instance. And we have a web application that basically serves as a dashboard. So the RDFization basically functions from um, the uh, object model that's provided for the database. It's an XML file. And we iterate over that and we convert, uh, so that allows you to determine what to query in the database. And we take those, we generate triples, we merge resources where it makes sense, we link them out, and then we load the data into a triple store. So what we find is we have uh, yeah, roughly 100 million uh, triples for each of the mines. Um, uh, some order of 10 to, 20, 10 to 50 million different distinct entities, uh, about uh, 100, and, uh, 100 to 200 properties, and n types. <laughs> now, what's interesting is that as part of the Intermine specification, people were supposed to add uh, links to other databases in this cross-reference table. And so when we, gen when we you know, process this automatically, this is the graph that we get that sort of shows which, uh, you know, what data are they connecting to. 
And so they kind of have to make it explicit. So what's surprising, for instance, is to see um, that, for instance, only the mouse intermine uh, instance, mouse mine, uh, links to PubMed explicitly. Although all of them do, they have separate tables where they are putting that information in. So again, they're not following even the most basic standard. And I think this really helps expose, um, uh, you know, again, here, what are, what are the resources are they linking to? And where are they not all linking to the same things where they should be? So uh, we have, so if you go to the website, uh, mo-ld.org. So this is basically the linked data platform. We have a few different tools that are available to browse, uh, search and browse these data. So we have a Sparkle query editor, a faceted browser, a RHEL finder for relation visualization, and an application programming interface. Um, so for instance here, this is a kind of picture that you, or a, a interface for composing your Sparkle queries. There's a few example queries that you can choose from and execute them. Uh, and so again, um, this uh, also allows us to do federated queries, so not just what's in the mine, but then also querying to, for instance, resources in BioTrdf could potentially use for uh, Uniprot and, and, and other uh, linked data resources. So uh, we also, what, we're, what we have sort of realized is that there are plenty of tools out there for linked data for Spark endpoints. What we want to do is try to bring them all together. Uh, and this is part of the packaging effort where we're using Docker to do this. But this is one of the tools, RHEL Finder, which allows you to uh, 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 identify two or more different entities and find all the links between them. So this is hyper useful and I think one of the demonstrations for why you want your knowledge, why you want to build a knowledge graph, because it's relatively easy to traverse that and find connections between the different entities. So we've sort of brought that in and it gets automatically deployed with the uh, mine instance. So again, uh, yeah, so we're using Docker. Um, and so we've actually made Docker applications for the web application, that data dashboard, uh, the API, and also even for the data itself. So the data is loaded into Virtuoso in Im images. These are basically Docker files. And so you can bring the database fully loaded uh, right to the desktop. So basically, in about five commands, you can, you can deploy this all with uh, Docker. So in our experience, not all the data uh, that we see in model organism databases on their websites are present in the Intermine instance. And so we have had to have conversations with this team, with the YeastMine team in particular, and say, why do we see this on your website? Why isn't it in the Intermine? And what's going on here? And so this pushback has really helped uh, 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 move that conversation for them to provide more content in, in the Intermine instance. And I think that we're going to have to do this with each of the model organism databases. Um, but I think that was one of the successes is this engagement between us, people who want to see data in a certain way with the connections that we're expecting, with the teams that are actually producing the data. Um, again, we're focused basically on, on the core model of um, uh, but there are many, many other tables that are being produced. Uh, and so I think either the model organism, uh, so the intermine teams either have to create new standard tables for those other types that people are generating, or again, they have to and extend the core in some way, or we might have to modify our script to uh, accommodate these other kinds of data now, on a mine specific uh, uh, basis. All right, so where are we heading? So what we envisioned, of course, this was really kind of a first way past where we're just generating the linked data, but really we want to start to standardize that representation. We've done work here at the Biohackathon on something called Faldo, which is for genomic coordinates, and that's used for, for genomic browsing and JBrowse and other tools. Um, so we want to incorporate these kind of standard terminologies, say for genomic locations, for citations, and for other kinds of biomedical data types that, that are in these databases. Um, we want to look at other kinds of ways to provide uh, qu high performance query services. So this was mentioned here where we have HDT and there's this triple uh, pattern fragments servers that you can deploy. These are really high availability, um, a very low CPU uh, sort of services. So we're exploring, we have Ruben in our group for the next three months. We're gonna explore how to do that. Um, we want to look at other ways that we can persist data in other repositories, and this is kind of where, you know, we've seen conversations about Wikidata, so we'd like to understand how we can best push this kind of content and make that part of the pipeline. Similarly here where we have schema.org mappings to build custom search engines that could be very useful for people who want to create custom portals over those kinds of data. Um, 
we want to look and see whether or not the curation that is occurring on uh, at SGD, so the model organism databases are under enormous pressure at the moment. Um, their funding is being threatened significantly. And so we really have to think about what is it that they should be actively trying to do. And so I think one thing is to start looking at what are people searching for, what are they browsing, what are they querying for, and start to prioritize curation accordingly. And finally, from our perspective, the reason that we want to get involved in this is that we want to learn something from having all model organism database uh, data at one point. We want to look at this in the perspective of conservation of function and trying to develop uh, strategies for drug discovery. Okay, so that's it. Thank you.